Are you looking to level up your skills in affinity designer to become a more skilled artist who is able to create great looking illustrations and surface pattern designs? Well, make sure you watch this video till the end. By the end of this video, you will learn 8 essential features in Affinity Designer. Some of these features have been recently added in the new 2.4 version and some of them I have been using for a while so they have proved to be helpful. Let's open Affinity Designer now to have a look at the first one. Create color cord. The first feature that I'd like to show you are color cords. Here you need to create a new color palette first by clicking these three lines in the swatches panel. You can choose Add Application Palette if you want this new palette to appear in your swatches every time you open any document. Or you can choose Add Document Palette if you want to open the new color palette only in this document. Either way, rename this new color palette and click OK. Now you need to choose one color as a base color. Affinity will create a color combination for us based on this color. Then go to the color panel and hover over Add Core to swatch. Here you can choose what type of color combinations you want. I'll go with Split Complementary. This new color combination was automatically added to my newly created document palette. If you decide to change the saturation or lightness of any color, you can do it by double-clicking on that color in your swatches and playing around with the color wheel. The second feature is called Fit to Curve Delete Note feature. I use this feature mostly when I'm working with the pencil tool and my hand is a bit shaky. Let's say you created a leaf shape, but it looks a little bit crooked. I'll draw one and create a copy to show you two ways of doing this so that you could compare the results. With this first one, I will simply click on the leaf with the note tool and delete notes that I don't need. With this second leaf, I will click on the leaf with the note tool, highlight notes I want to adjust and right click on one of those notes. I will get this window and when I scroll down, I'll find the fit to curve delete note and click on it. This will delete the selected nodes and automatically adjust the shape so that it wouldn't look so crooked. The third feature is Move Duplicate feature. This is one of the new features in version 2.4 and it can be helpful when you're making patterns, for example. Here you need to select an object first and then hit Enter to get this window. Let's say I want to create a copy of this square on the horizontal axis. I'll type 500 pixels into the first box. Then I need to tick the box for duplicates to get another copy. If I wanted to create more copies, I would simply hover over this number to increase the number of copies. The fourth feature is Lock Insertion Targets. Here on the top you can see three little squares. Each little square does something a little bit different and I'll go over the first and third one. Let's have a look at the first one called Insert Behind the Selection. To activate this feature, you need to select an object and click on this square. Anything that you'll create in the next step will be placed under your selected layer, but the next layers will be automatically created on top of your last layer again. But if you press Alt and click on Insert behind the selection square, it will kinda log this function and anything that you'll create from now on will be inserted in the layers panel from the top to the bottom. It means under your last created layer. The third square called Insert Inside the Selection allows you to insert objects into a selected object without having to drag a layer inside of another layer. So you create an object, press Alt and click on the third square to lock it. When you create another object, it will be automatically inserted into your selected object. The fifth feature is Size Rotate Object to Same. This is one of the new features too. Let's say I have these ribbons. Each of them has a different size, but I want them to be the same width. I'll select all of them, but before anything else I need to nominate a key object according to which the rest of the ribbons will change their width. I can do it by pressing Alt and clicking on my nominated object. Then I'll go to the alignment tool. On the bottom you can see three new options. If I click on the first option that says width, all my ribbons will be resized into the same width. But I need to take the maintain aspect ratio box if I don't want them to look this funny. The second option is for the same height of the objects and the third one is for rotation. Just before you choose the third option that goes for rotation, you actually need to rotate one of the objects first. The sixth feature is straighten up a rotated object. I use this feature quite a lot. Let's say I have these ribbons again which I rotated, but now I would like to come back to the original position and start positioning them from the beginning. I can bring them back to their vertical position by double-clicking the handle right here. To me it seems to be faster than holding shift and rotating the object to its original position manually. The seventh feature is switch from node tool to move tool. So far we had the option to switch from the move tool to the node tool by double-clicking a curve. Now it works the other way around too. When you're in the node tool you can come back to the move tool by double-clicking the curve. 
And the eighth and last feature is spacebar modifier for lock children. So this is also one of the new features and I was really happy to see that it was added. If you have a circle inserted inside of a square and you want to change the position or the size of the square, you can now do it without affecting the layer with the circle in the following way. Click and hold on the layer which you want to work with. In my case it's a square. And then press and hold the spacebar. Now you can move the square without doing anything to the circle and you can also change its size. I mean, isn't it great? So I hope that in today's video you've learned some new features in Affinity Designer and that your workflow will be even smoother. If you enjoyed this video, I believe you will like my another video where I speak about 5 more essential Affinity tips and features. I'll put the link somewhere on the screen. If there is anything you would like me to speak about in one of my future videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!